Going on a big trip today, Louie. Going to the Grand Canyon. Wake up, buddy. It's Grand Canyon day. Louie. Louie. It's the Grand Canyon day. Is he waking up? No, he's so cranky. He's a cranky teenager already? Louie's first view of the Grand Canyon. Look at this, Louie. That's the Grand Canyon. Check it out. Look at that. Oh, yeah. Whoa, Louie. Look at that. Look at that, Louie. Today is our second travel day with little Louie. The first one went fairly well. It wasn't uh, great, but it wasn't bad. But we were missing some key tools that we now have in our arsenal. So the first tool we didn't have was these nice pens. We have one inside, we have one outside, and I think this is gonna be a big game changer for us because we didn't know what to do with Louie as we were packing up or getting ready to leave. Yeah, and since he's not fully crate trained yet, we didn't wanna throw him in his crate and have him screaming the entire time that we were trying to pack up. So now we'll be able to take him. Look how happy he is in there. He loves it in here now. He's had about three weeks to transition to this and he really likes being outside. So we can put Louie outside while we wrap up the inside and while we hitch up and he's just going to be hanging out, watching the butterflies, smelling the grass, and enjoying life. To put things in perspective, Louis is now 14 weeks old and we've had him for about a month. The first RV park we were in was in Tucson and we spent uh, just about a week there and then we traveled from Tucson up to the Cottonwood, Arizona area, which is where we're at now. And we're headed to the Grand Canyon next. So we spent about two and a half weeks in this RV park, getting little Louie more acclimated to his environment and his surroundings, training, teaching every day, trying to make this process as smooth as possible. And now we're headed to the Grand Canyon to do a little bit of boondocking, and this will be Louie's first boondocking trip. Yeah, so the RV parks have been wonderful for socializing Louie with people and with dogs. And he loves people, he loves dogs, he loves attention. So now that we're going boondocking, he's going to lose a lot of that exposure. However, we are meeting a bunch of friends up in the Grand Canyon, so that's really good. There's still gonna be people there. I don't think anybody has dogs there, but at least he'll have people touching them, petting them, loving them. And we will be on the road for an extended period of time. The RV parks are gonna be out of our system for at least a month or so. And well, we think, you never know, but that's our plan. And we hope when we're boondocking, we'll be able to change our shifting of styles, like do more crate training where it's okay for him to scream since he doesn't bark. Sweet, sweet. Barkless, huh? Barkless dog. Not noiseless. Honestly, the RV park, it might be kind of alarming to our neighbors. It might sound like we're torturing a small child in here. And so we've been a little hesitant to really push the crate training. And we're looking forward to having that opportunity out in the wilderness. So crate training is a big deal and we need to do it more. We're using these pens to give us and Louie some time and some safety so he's not chewing on rv wires or getting into um you know chewing on our brand new rv or yeah, anything like he that he hasn't ruined anything in here no he's done so that's really really good yeah with the month uh he's almost fully potty trained really great potty training louie let's go come here come on lou okay okay you know he's not gonna get up <laughs> get up from a deep slumber. Oh, he's so tired. Rough day. It's been a rough day. So sleepy. Yeah, he did throw up this morning. He wasn't <laughs> feeling well. We don't know what that's from. We're, we switched his food. He was eating rabbit poop yesterday. He, yesterday he was doing a lot of grass eating and rabbit poop eating, so I think it's that. He's about ready to fall asleep in this position. <laughs> he is so sleepy. Okay, let's go outside. Once Louie's in his outside pen, I'm gonna take 
fold up the inside pin, hopefully store it underneath the dinette. And then we'll throw in the slide. It's all clear on the outside. Make sure nothing's in the corners. We haven't had any issues with the slide yet. After six months, it's been working very well for us. No issues, fingers crossed. Okay, we are wrapped up on the inside. So next we're gonna get the truck ready and hitch up and we'll get moving on the road here pretty quickly. It's been a little bit of a rough go. This is always difficult with filming and taking care of the dog and all this new stuff that we have, but it's always an adventure. Inside the truck we're using just this kind of collapsible travel crate. Seems to be working fairly good so far, but it is soft-sided, so we're worried he might puncture some holes in this. Uh, but he really seems to like it. It's dark, it's ventilated, and in the truck he usually goes right to sleep, but we'll see how he does today. Every day is a new day. Okay, Louis has not peed, but he's just sitting out there. There's nothing we can do. So, he's just laying down. <laughs> it's okay, buddy, it's okay. We're all in here together. So we're gonna go up top, grab our last package, and then we'll take him out one more time, and hopefully he'll pee then. Going for a big ride to the Grand Canyon, Louis. <laughs> Ouch. Let's get moving. Teenagers. It's a good two and a half weeks at Cottonwood RV Park. It was a great stay. We really love this park. Verde Valley, I mean. Verde Valley. <laughs> We've been here before. The last time, I think a lot of it depends on which spot you get here at this specific park because the last time Aaron was butt to butt with another RV. There was tons of kids around, noisy and dogs noisy like the entire time. This time we had a beautiful end cap spot. We had the best neighbor in the world and it makes all the difference. Plus the weather was spectacular. Yeah, really nice. So we'll definitely come back to this park again. I I'm don't know I'm gonna show when. the view out the top here. So the top sites that you can see Sedona way out there. And yeah, it's then, just 30 minutes from Sedona. Yeah, pretty beautiful park and it's big. It's nice. If Louie was a little more advanced, we definitely would have made a day trip, but... And Louie, I don't know if you can see, is down and sleeping already. We haven't even made it out of the park yet. It's been about four minutes. Yeah, but you can hear peace and silence. Yes. Big rig coming through. Yeah, Louis is been sleeping in the, in Minnesota. tightly. Yeah. Every Friday, we're listening to, to our episode on the RVE podcast that just came out today. And, it and so, so if you uh, have never heard of the RVE podcast, the RV Entrepreneur, uh, it's a great podcast that Heath Pageant started uh, back in, I don't know, 2015 or something like that, many, many years ago, maybe 16 or 17. And um, and now uh, a, a new host, Joshua from Gander Flight, is now taking it over, and we got the privilege of going on, and it was a fun time. It was fun. It's fun to even just re-listen to it, even though we were obviously there for the interview. It's like, oh, we get to relive it again. Yeah, we don't tell our story a whole lot, like our intro story and and kind of how it all started. How so. much planning we put into this life. Yeah. So if you do want to hear more of it, it is on Spotify and probably some other ones. It's called the RVE Podcast. We're episode number 243. <laughs> That's a good ring to it. Yes. One hour 
Madrid. We're coming up to Flagstaff, Arizona. We haven't been up here for a while. No, I wish we actually had a couple more days to kick it around here. Yeah, yeah, there's a lot of uh, cool areas that we haven't explored around Flagstaff. It's usually, can be cold, so I think last time we were here it was way too cold for us. Yeah. But Louie just woke up. <laughs> so we're doing some whining, whimpering yeah. and whining. It's been an hour, so we're looking to pull off somewhere and get uh, a little bit of B break for everybody in the in the rig. <laughs> Ooh, look at that view. Yeah, I love the big mountain. I don't even know which mountain that is. I should know that by now, but it's so massive looking. It's got to hold it a little bit longer, Lou. There's grass up here. Yeah. I swear we were back here in the van. <laughs> you say that a lot. We pull into these random spots and you I get these I think flashbacks. we sat back here for a little bit in the van. No camping, no parking. We're parking just to pee and then we'll be out of here. It does smell like grip. Smell like burning? I don't know if that's us, the truck that smells like burning, or if it's if it's where we're at. I'm free! Hey buddy! I'm free! Hey Louie! Yeah. I'm so excited. Yeah, don't bend over backwards. Good boy, Louie. You've been a good boy. That was a good ride. Snoozed. Let me just chuck it. Make sure you didn't pee in there. Feels dry. Feels dry. Good job, Louie. Good job, Louie. So we kind of noticed a little bit of a smell when we got out. And we couldn't tell if it was a truck or something else. But I can kind of smell it under the hood. It's a little bit of a weird noise. But I can hear that big pipe there. It's our uh, diesel particulate filter I believe and these go through self regen processes where they heat up and try to like I don't know clean themselves out and I'm thinking that's maybe what it was doing because it's really hot and it's like making these like uh kind of hot noises where the metal is expanding the little clicks like that so I think it's okay well we're not having good luck peeing over here Little Lou didn't pee? No. Is didn't. this our bag? No, it's not our bag. But there's all sorts of things he just wants to sniff and explore. It might take him a little bit to pee in unusual spots, so. Just got him to go pee, but it took about almost 20 minutes of walking him around. He's not usually like that. He goes right away, but it's definitely key to make sure he goes. He went. He went. He went. He's excited. all tucked out, tuck, tuckered out from his travel day. Big day, Louie. He did really good. He did pretty good. What do you say, pretty good? Well, I don't know. How hard is it to be a dog? I guess, I mean, he did With good. two pampering He did good with the humans. amount of people that he was exposed to here. There's a lot of people out there. Yeah, there was a lot of people.
Okay, Chris is okay. Chris is out hiking the Grand Canyon today. My ankle is still on the mend, and of course, I'm here taking care of Louie. So, what am I gonna do with myself today? I figured I would do a little project for Louie. So, one of the biggest problems we've had so far is crate training. And then we've also been using this pen inside the house and we have one outside as well. So the crate, I bought that exact size to fit back here on this side and I figured it would be a great permanent home for Louis as he grows and he'll have his own little kind of corner. But it turns out he really likes people and does not like to be left alone. So that's why we started with the pen and he really got used to the pen he likes it because it's in the middle of our rv here and he gets to be with everybody so we go well why don't we move his crate into the middle as well but we're only in a 26 foot rv so we don't have that much space so my solution is to connect the pen and the kennel together and kind of make this makeshift little home here and what we're gonna do is just kind of leave this open, put his bed in there. Hopefully he'll get used to that and he'll kind of play in this area. I actually thought of this idea a few weeks ago and the reason I kind of stopped it is because I thought, oh, as soon as I put the kennel in here, he's gonna be able to maybe jump up on the kennel and then jump up on the sides here. What is this, Louis? Look at this. Look at this. What do you think? What do you think, Louis? What do you think, huh? You thirsty, buddy? I'm sitting outside in the sunshine. Louis, sit. Sit. Good boy. Good boy. Yes, good boy. Hey guys. Yay. You made it. Congratulations! <laughs> Louie! Hey babe! Hi, How are Louis. you? Hi! Louie missed you! Who are these people, Louie? What do we think, Louie? Auntie Deb got him a little sweater. A little buffy buff. He is not sure what to do. He's walking kind of funny. Yeah. He doesn't quite sure know what to do. What a winter wonderland. Oh, he's peeing. Good boy, Louie. What do you think, Lou? It's pretty fun, huh? I've seen a lot of videos of them, like with sweaters and snow jackets and stuff. So here is the finished shovel result. We went from eight watts of solar to over 230 watts of solar of our total 1200 watts of solar. So pretty big deal to get up and clear off the solar panels. We were getting zero sun. And if you look over this way, try not to fall, that's the sun up there in the clouds. 
So even on a super overcast day, we're still getting in 230 plus watts of solar. I mean, super overcast. There's no sun. It's behind a thick layer of snow clouds. Yeah. Yeah, one day ago, this was a nice, fun campsite with chairs and fire pits and a party. Yeah. <laughs> All right, I'm going to go up to the Spencer's rig and, and get them some solar.